What's going on YouTube? 008 here, I'm here with my sister Kemi and we're about to react to the honest trailers of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'm actually looking forward to this one, almost like, a, like an Infinity War trailer because this film has been polarizing like most of this year already, like since it came out last year in December. And you know how we felt about this film. The film was, yeah, yeah. that's how I felt about the film. Like, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to... That's how I felt about the film, honestly. It's a good example. And I was just, and these guys, screen junkies, I watched their review of it and they were like, uh, we like it, we like it. You know how all these big, these big movie channels, kind of, these movie review channels all kind of seem to like it for some reason. But there was one guy, Dan Murrow, he hated it like everybody else seems to hate it. So I'll be very curious to see how this honest trailer plays out, see what their bias is like. It could all! I can't see how you destroyed the last Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see about that. They probably I will, you they will it. destroy it because... In a polarised world, the next installment of the franchise, all about balance and non-attachment, will be worshipped, hated, and obsessed over until it's not even fun to talk about anymore. <laughs> this is not going to go the way you think. Yeah. Eh, we know Star Wars fans by now. Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Forget the love letter to the originals that was The Force Awakens, because Episode 8 subverts everything you come to expect, making it the worst one ever. Oh, who oh. invited the original Honest Trailer voice back? The, the are we really going to do the old ones are better slash new ones are better thing we did with The Force Awakens? The only way to talk about Star Wars now is in absolutes. So, yes. Kind of sithy of you, but fine. Making Last Jedi a refreshing update to a predictable formula that spits in the face of everything you once loved. Whiner, traitor. Meet the new class of heroes coming into their own, like Rey, who after being called by Luke's lightsaber, is called by the Jedi text, called by a big wet hole, and called by her greatest frenemy. <sighs> Yet still gets zero answers to any of her questions. I thought I'd find answers here. Oh, who grows from a hotshot sexy pilot to a treasonous failure with more blood on his hands than the Empire. First Order, same difference. And Finn, who went from a deserter running away from the war to a deserter running away from the war. With the help of newcomer Rose, he learned to put the career good above himself thanks to a pointless side quest to Casino Royale. Because how dare they spend 15 minutes connecting the action to a larger theme? The larger theme being, is it possible to miss pod racing? I didn't <laughs> think so, but here we are. <laughs> but forget about the butthurt fanboys who are just mad the movie isn't closer to the one they wrote in their heads. Hey! Because they're still all the old favorites like Leia, a battle-hardened general trying to keep the spark of hope alive. And she's in a coma. Chewbacca, who gets nothing to do. And Luke Skywalker. Who, after sad old Han and sad old Leia, really drives home how your heroes are all sad and old now. He's turned his back on the franchise after watching the prequels. Let me see the Jedi's failure. And not even reruns of A New Hope can change his mind. Because what Star Wars fans really needed was to see their idol throw his lightsaber away like it was some kind of joke. And Star Wars is not a joke to me! Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about it. Ryan Johnson ruined my childhood like he ruined the laws of space battle. There are no laws to space battle. There should be. Luke isn't the only Skywalker who has issues with the franchise. Kylo Ren is back, and he's demanding a full reboot. I'm a past time. Kill it. If you have to. When he doesn't look like he's about to cry, which is always... I think he was sick, man. He's doing a good thing about last year. Honestly. He was so good. Watch as he ditches the Vader fanboy act, the Mighty Duck crap. mask, and his really shirt. I don't get this, but I'm going to this. He's got a white chest. Hey, you distracted me on purpose. Too late. Moving on. Get ready for truly unexpected answers to the puzzles of Episode 7. That can only be answered by asking, what are the most disappointing answers to the puzzles of Episode 7? Like who are Ray's parents? Nobody. Who is Snow? Some dead guy. <laughs> and how did Maz Kanata get Luke's lightsaber? It doesn't matter, and you're stupid for asking. That after all the hours of speculation and analysis, was genuinely <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. How do we keep from a 
certain point of viewing each other. Yeah, we're both pretty big Star Wars nerds, huh? So gear up for the most divisive Star Wars film ever made. Where Ryan Johnson either doesn't understand the lore, or he made the first Star Wars movie that lives up to the values it preaches, instead of endorsing royal bloodlines and reckless aggression. Okay, enough division. Let's say our favorite things about it on the count of three. One, two, three. Ray Pilots is about to fight the Praetorian Guard. Yeah. Over there, he looked with a stick. Porks! Wait, really? Yeah, I'll own it. Okay, now, least favorite. Oh, oh no, tell me what it went. I did knock you down a peg, but come on. They're taking shuttles to a fort. Why make everyone think they're gonna die? I can't argue with that, though I'm sure people will. Should we do this again for Solo? Nah. Yeah, I'm not gonna see that crap. <laughs> Sorry. Half the Star Wars fan base. Salt. Blu-ray. Luke T. Milker. Carrie Poppins. <laughs> then the human. I've been kissed by the rose on oh, the that was terrible. Oh, that was so serious. <laughs> God, <laughs> so give me the cocky keys, your cocky nerf herder. Short round. Shield. Brianna Dorth. Hugs to be you. <laughs> and redemption for Star Wars Kid. <laughs> the, worst, the last one you'll pay to see. Until the next one comes out. Yeah, it's so G. No, no. I ain't seen number it's nine. It's time for my fandom to end. Did you hear JJ finish the script for episode nine? My fandom is back. Temporarily. One You're not wrong. It is the last one I'll pay to see. see. Or serious well, I will watch episode nine. nine. Or click the box in That's the front. That's what I'm going to say to that. <laughs> and with puppies. Oh, okay. What the yeah. cause? Broccoli, my mortal. Interesting. But it's funny because you know how everyone's annoyed about this film. Right. But you know everyone's still gonna go and see number nine and be like, yeah, no, man, it's gonna piss me it. off. I don't have the same gripes as a lot of people have for the film, like, oh, they changed Luke's character so much. Like, yeah, that's a bit annoying, but obviously in 30 years, obviously a lot's happened to Luke. That's yeah. why you change like that. My problem is they don't explain why he's changed. They have to explain why he's changed so much. They don't really, ex they say, oh, like, what? Why did he change? Because Kylo Ren is kind of bad, but there's no reason for him to go crazy like that. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I don't mind, I like the idea of um, Ray's parents being nobody because the Force was never meant to be a genetical thing anyway. Yeah. It's supposed to be a spiritual thing that anybody can kind of lock onto. Okay. So I like that, but again, Ray's such a boring character, I don't care about who her parents were or any of her questions mm. anyway. My problem with the film is it's just boring. There's nothing interesting going on. But you have to, you no have cool to admit. Plot. I think, yeah, like, like you said before, anything with Kylo Ren in it. Yeah, Kylo Ren's awesome. good, but he hasn't had a win, so he's not a threatening bad guy. Like the first mm -hmm. film, fine, they, they, they subverted our expectations of the first <coughs> film, where he lost to Ray in the first fight. But now he's still losing. And come on, man. Why am I? And then they've killed the other main threat, Snoke. Like, he's not even a threat. Oh, like, so, it was pretty scary in the first one. Yeah, at the start. This. Maybe that's the point? I don't know. Yeah, that would have been good if there was another... If there, but there needs to be a threat. He's not even a threat right now. Ray seems super, way stronger than him <laughs> already. But anyway, let's talk about this honest trailer. Like... I'm not, this honest trailer was weird. Like, I could, it's basically what I said, because if you watched Screen Junkies review, like, they proper seem to like the film, and this other trailer seemed like they were trying to balance, like, uh, all the hate everybody has with all the love that they have for mm. the film, so they can reach all sides, I guess. I bet the comments will be interesting, I want to read I don't know, it sounds like they're pretty, they hate it. Yeah, man, I don't know, man. Well, it was just like... When a film's bad, like, they all go into it, they all riff into it on this trailer, usually. This one seems a bit tame, like, they were just trying to rip into it in a roundabout way. I was looking forward to this and yeah, it wasn't that great of an honest trailer to be honest. <laughs> yeah. My honest review of the honest trailer. Oh my god. So let me know in comments below guys, who's gonna watch Star Wars Episode 9? You guys gonna watch Obviously, it? Obviously. I'll watch, watch it, it, but I ain't gonna go to the cinema to watch it man. Nah. I don't need to go to the cinema, I don't care, I really don't care. I like, I, I'm, curious, sure? I'm curious to see what they do, just to see how they go, where the hell they're going to go with this. Oh, it might know. be good. It might, maybe this, somehow J.J. Abrams will pull something out of his ass and make something good. But all I know is I ain't watching the cinema, but yeah.
Wolf is really good. I'll be like, wow, it's good. They did a good job. But I don't know how you can make this good. They've, the, the foundations have been destroyed. And you know, like Korg says, well, at least the foundations are there. God. <laughs> oh, no, that's gone too. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's creepy. So, you know, you need the foundations. There's no foundations. The whole thing's gone. What does he say that? In Ragnarok. Yeah, when? When, the, when Asgard is getting destroyed. Oh, yeah. That's, that's Marvel for you. That's Marvel yeah. comedy for you. I know. God, the whole, the whole flipping... Uh, a whole different place is getting destroyed and they're like cracking jokes about it but yeah that's thing. anyway that's our reaction to the only shows of Star Wars The Last Jedi if you liked it give us a like subscribe and we'll see you again peace